Hello friends from a warm and sunny Manila where over 70 participants from over 20 countries have gathered at the first International Solidarity Conference on for climate migrants. Uh, today we are in conversation and this uh, sorry this conference has been organized by Loza, Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung Foundation. Today we are in conversation with Annie Lestari, a migrants right activist and chairperson of Hong Kong based International Migrants Alliance. Annie is also the local person for APWLDs, that is uh, Asia Pacific Forum for Women, Law and Development, the Law and Development's Labor and Migration Program. Welcome, Annie. Uh, Annie, what are the problems of climate migrants and how are they different from those migrating in search of jobs? Are they different? There are uh, migrants going to in search of jobs to other countries, migrants who are getting displaced because of um, uh, climate issues or natural disasters. Is there any difference between the two? Um, I think before we talk about the difference, we have to recognize the similarity first. Okay. Uh, in today's world, there are currently 250 million uh, migrants, and uh, I believe it, the number is, has been more now. And out of that number, 150 million are considered contractual migrant workers. We have seen a lot in ASEAN countries or even Middle Eastern. Uh, while the 60 over 60 million are uh, is considered a refugee, asylum seeker, and displaced people. So there are three type of category why the huge number of people are moved out from their own land and stay outside. Uh, either as a job or trying to live there, you know, uh, temporarily or permanently. One is really about the growing uh, impoverishment in in different parts of the world, especially from Asia, uh, Latin America, and Africa. Uh, the third, the th the three region has been, you know, uh, in the history colonized and again neo colonized uh, through the investment, financial uh, dependency, and so on, and then. The second issue is really war and uh, political persecution. We see that in Syria, Afghanistan, and even in other parts of uh, country where indigenous people are fighting for uh, their own uh, land are also being prosecuted. And that actually forces them to move out. And their own land are being plundered by corporates. So again, they are being moved out. Uh, because of the situation. And the, th the, the third one is now what is being hotly debated. Uh, some people call them climate migrants or climate refugee, mm -hmm. where they are actually pushed out after uh, certain uh, disasters. It's either man-made disasters uh, or maybe, you know, uh, people call it natural or God-made mm -hmm. disasters. So, uh, however, in common, the three of them uh, fall into the category of forced migration. They do not really want to live in the first place, but eventually, after they exhaust all means from trying to stay on, finding a job, trying to rebuild the house, they cannot make it. And then if they are mother or father or even they are in the an adult or, or you know, they are in the productive age, they have to think of the long term sustainability of the family. So eventually they are being pushed uh, away from their own homeland. So what happened really when they move out is the question. Those who are belonging to the contractual migrants usually are being highly regulated. So they are being constrained by uh, uh, sending government re policies. You know, you have to go to agency. There is also agency in receiving country. And that country where you go will make so many regulations from visa, usually one year, two year stay. They will kick you out if you lose the job. They will arrest you or deport you if you try to make protest or complain. And they have a lo a low wages, non day off, uh, and a lot of uh, inhuman uh, regulation. So practically, we are regulated, recognized legally, but yet we are highly uh, dehumanized. Now, there are people who are forced also into an undocumented status after some time. Most actually were documented and eventually because of mm. a lot of abuses, they choose or they were forced to be undocumented. And those people will still work in different um, service sector from factories, uh, even in mining companies or or even household, you know, but yet they are not being covered by anything. Of course, they are also facing a lot of exclusion 
no hospital access to hospital or there is no legal protection and so on and they will be deported eventually and refugee uh, and and uh, asylum seeker also worse they are being in the camp for years waiting for one day that one of the country will accept them as a refugee or asylum seeker uh, and they cannot work you know under the uh, current system they are only allowed to stay but no job they are being given very small subsidy but with children and growing children and family with them a lot of them are forced to find a way how to survive you know by finding a job locally and now the climate migrants there are there are different type of climate migrants either one who are still livable but eventually to rebuild the house they have to work abroad so they will fall either in one in one of the category but what about the society that being forced to holy so what happened to them in the ASEAN for example or Pacific um, some of them were already doing that you know um, and and unfortunately no country yet actually accept them so either they just cross border quote unquote illegally mm -hmm. and then they have to end up being undocumented and stateless mm -hmm. in this country receiving country and then because they cannot know what to do they they used to be fisher fisher and then now they become farmer or become laborer a lot of them also endure a lot of this undocumented situation they have been heavily exploited they have been very low and then yet no regulation so practically what the the differences is really they move out without home to return perhaps mm -hmm. uh, some of them have home but because government do not pay attention anymore to rebuilding the society to restudying what is really ha whether that place is uh, livable and they don't even care if people will be able to sustain their livelihood in the long run so individually they are forced to decide on their own so either internally they migrate or externally but eventually they become laborer maltreated and then yet no home to to go uh, is climate change the only reason uh, for the poor plight of what we term as climate migrants? Can we blame it wholly on climate change? Uh, I do not completely agree to that. It took us a while in IMA to even understand because we represent a grassroots voices and it's not just even we are fellow migrants or, you know, diaspora. We cannot just solely saying we know what they want because in every national context has different specification you know some of island who still sustainable it's just matter of reparation mm. some places that is impossible to live on is really matter of relocation mm. now if we, climate change is a global issue whether you are in the north whether you are in in the west or even in the south doesn't matter everyone suffer from that you know but if you see in asia in asia for example japan is one country who actually live near the sea and they always have the tsunami flood earthquake has been part of their nature but you don't see japanese move out their land and go somewhere for the sake of being temporary or permanent uh, uh, migrants you know uh, because the government give a lot of attention to uh, uh, early warning system training them how to uh, survive in that situation and create a lot of good infrastructure highly in highly quality infrastructure uh, building to make sure that even if there is one the whole thing will not be destroyed now Canada also has the same they always have tornadoes they always have typhoon and so on but you don't see them moving out in, in, in millions but ASEAN uh, in Asia, in, in Latin America, uh, and even in Africa, you see millions mm -hmm. are, are crossing the border by walking because of this. So the question is like this. If countries who are very advanced do not have to leave their homeland just because of the disaster, why we are forced to leave? Then we are forced to recognize that the climate change effect worse country with very poor infrastructure mm -hmm. country where it is so underdeveloped corrupt governments and uh, how to say c country where the investment are where the mining when the corporate mm -hmm. actually took away all the resources wi without you know uh, considering the consequences to the environment and this become 
a crime and criminal as an act because the global corporation work with the government to plunder not only in five, ten years, thirty years, fifty mm-hmm. years, sixty mm-hmm. years, and then leave us with nothing mm-hmm. but to face the consequences. And yet now they don't want to talk. They don't want to talk about that part. They only talk about climate change is the mm-hmm. problem of the migration. Say, well, we don't agree to that. So what is the way forward according to you? Of course, the role of the government is important and the role of good governance and probably good disaster management systems being in place is important. What is the way forward? Well, uh, honestly, this is new chapter in our human history where climate really affects everyone. Uh, in the global arena, there are a lot of recommendations where, you know, emission has to be really cut down, the the heat, the sea, you know, sea level and so on. And I, 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 we agree to that completely, you know. Um, if the global corporates continually, continuously exploit the land, the, you know, the nature we have for their profit and greed by neglecting the future of human race, then it becomes the loss to everyone. So we are enjoying with all movement in the world fighting for that, you know, uh, with with the farmer, you know, who are fighting for the land and so on. But then when it comes to migrants or displacement, I think the imp- it is uh, what we have today is a global and regional analysis mm-hmm. on you know uh, the effect of climate change to a certain area, but then. If you go deeper into national context or territorial context, every area has specification. Some place will really seem very fast. Mm. Then you have no choice but to f- find a way where to relocate mm. with them. That, that will require certain study, not only by the grassroots, but even by an expert of all these things. You know, we cannot even say, but if they have, they will, e- they can even predict the future uh, consequences. I'm sure they can even say whether this land is livable or not. So I think that kind of science, uh, you know, study will be really required. But then we ha- the second study we have to do is to really find a way how this displace people internally, externally, because of this destruction to their environment, uh, will have to be uh, s- you know, uh, gather and also further investigate it to, in order to understand what do they want. Some people might want to l- continue live on, but if the science say you can you can live here in the next twenty years, but after that it will sink, then let let them decide. But then you have to give a better option. Mm-hmm. You know, we will relocate you to a place where you still nearby, but you are still far away from this kind of area. So I think. By heart, these people will also don't want their children to be seen to the sea. Mm-hmm. But there are some that is still uh, still livable, but just government don't want to do anything to repair and compensate and redress. Then the the best way is really to have a solid argument to put back to the national government and to this global corporate to be more accountable by pressuring them to repair what has been destroyed. So I think we cannot have this one-off solution Mm -hmm. Uh, nationally and even regionally because Africa, Latin America and uh, 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 and Asia will be completely different. If we don't have like historical and further study, I don't think so we have the right solution to all. So again, we are actually pushing all uh, parties from grassroots, NGO to government to be be more um, proactive in studying this uh, this uh, you know, phenomenon or trend of climate change and the impact to the displacement. Thank you, Annie, f- Annie for a very, very sharp and incisive insight into this uh, issue. Friends, we were listening to Annie Lestari, chairperson of Hong Kong based International Migrants Alliance, on site from the first International Solidarity Conference on the Rights of Climate Migrants, organized by Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung Foundation. This conference is being live streamed at www.climatemigrationforum.net and be welcome to follow hashtags beyond labels beyond borders or climate migrants rights now. Thank you. Okay, thank Thank you you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks. Great. So now we need to